Welcome to Win the Day from Back to the Bible. I'm your coach, Pastor Nat, and today we're going to talk about preparing for the hardship of life. While driving through rural Alabama on a recent trip, I saw a sign that read, When life gets too heavy to carry, kneel. <laughs> it took me a second to think about what that meant, but once I got it, it made me realize I wish more of us took that advice seriously. Sure, when the going gets real tough, we toss a prayer up to God. But before we get that desperate, what do we do first? We call friends. We search on Google. We do everything that we can do. But then we sprinkle prayer for good measure. We kneel down and pray. But what if? What if instead of reactive prayer, we were proactive in prayer? What if instead of being desperate, we were dependent? Or maybe you're wondering, well, Nat, who even cares? Well, the Apostle Paul cared, and so should we. Here's what Paul said about prayer in Colossians chapter 4, beginning in verse 12. Epaphras, a member of your own fellowship and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. I can assure you that he prays hard for you and also for the believers in Laodicea and Hierapolis. You may remember that Epaphras was the founder of the Colossian church and likely the pastor of it. He alerted Paul to the heretical teaching about Christ. Epaphras was not just near to Paul, but also part of the Colossian family. He was a fellow servant or slave of Christ. He, like any good pastor, was praying for his spiritual family. Paul says he was earnestly praying for you. A better translation was agonizingly praying. Uh, he was fervently laboring in prayer on the Colossians' behalf. Well, what was he praying for? Paul said that Epaphras was praying for God to make them strong and perfect. Now, I think the NLT here does a poor job of translating this because he is praying that they will be strong or prepared and unmovable in their faith. He's not praying that they become perfect, but instead fully mature. He's praying that they will become disciple-making disciples who are fully committed to Christ. Paul is praying that they will be fully confident. He's praying that they are fully convinced and persuaded to the truths of God and of Jesus Christ. They need to be strong. Uh, they need to be mature and convinced of who Jesus is and what God has said so that they will be lovingly obedient to him, no matter where he calls. Epaphras was praying for his spiritual flock and for the flocks in the area for their continued pursuit of Christ. Friends, that's my prayer for you as well. So here's my challenge. Pray and do. I want you to spend time specifically praying for the faith of your friends, for the faith of your family, and even your church. In times like these, it seems too easy to fall away. We need to stand firm, stand faithful, and stand on God's word. We need to pray that way, and then we need to do it as well. We need to constantly be on our knees, praying for each other and then putting on our new nature. In other words, we need to just do it. We need to live out the truths of Scripture. So we need to pray for others and then we need to live out what we know to be true. When we are not just hearers of the word, but doers, you know it, friend, we will win the day.